Oh, there's great video going around of Attorney General Barr uh, who stopped. He was going to some kind of meeting or something. He asked his FBI detail. Hold on a second, because he walked past a support the cops rally in. I guess it was in. I think I actually forget where it was, uh, but he stopped by and chatted with them. And it was just nice to see, uh, you know, B- Bill Barr. I, I'm a, I'm a, a fan of his work for the administration. That's that's for sure. And I get people keep asking me, do you think that there that he will do what is necessary with the Durham probe? I think that if Durham gives him the goods, he he would be willing to use it, but it will have to be ironclad. And I don't think he's going to have it. I just don't think Durham's going to. I know I'm going to stop saying it because people say, but come on. I try to tell you the truth about this stuff. Um, de Blasio is the worst mayor in America. And I know some of you don't live in uh, New York City, a lot. Most of you don't live in New York City. So you're like, why are we talking about de Blasio? Well, because he's a a harbinger of things to come. A, a person who, because of demographic change in some states where you just have a Democrat str- uh, stronghold and there's really there's one party rule, there's no accountability, right? Because you're going to replace one Democrat with another Democrat. No one cares. And you, you have people like de Blasio in many places across the country. I actually just saw a thing and where was this this was in in austin texas there's a bike shop pretty well-known bike shop that i think was founded by uh lance armstrong uh, but in austin texas there's a there's a bike shop that is saying that it will no longer service bikes uh bikes that cops buy rent use basically they're not they're not their business is no longer going to help cops on bicycles Wow, Austin, I know we got a lot of folks in KLBJ land that that listen to the show and you see stuff like this and you've got to wonder, don't don't they feel like frauds doing stuff like this? Don't they feel bad treating police badly when if the mob came outside their store, we all know what they would do, especially if they're libs who don't like cops because they're less likely to be armed. They're going to call the cops, say, please help us right away. But the hypocrisy doesn't matter. They, They don't they don't care. Uh, they don't care about who is hurt in all of this. It just it feels too good to take these Democrat positions. It feels too uh, self-congratulatory to give that up. Speaking of all that stuff, de Blasio, back to de Blasio, uh, ruining New York, ruining America's largest city. He's doing a fantastic job of destroying the city. Uh, here, here's what he's saying. Now, and look, I, I understand people are in a tough spot. I don't I don't think that. There should be unfair penalization of anybody who's lost their job or anything else because of the pandemic. But here's here's what de Blasio's position on this stuff is. Play seven. The eviction moratorium expired at midnight last night. And that is a huge problem for the people of New York City, and it must be addressed. And I'm going to say again, in these next weeks, you're going to hear a lot from me calling upon our state government to create a new system to allow those who simply cannot pay for lack of income to be able to have a payment plan model that will take them into next year, allow them to pay off the rent over time when they finally have resources. But no one should be put out on the street because they can't pay. They literally can't pay. So while we're fighting that battle in Albany, right now I want to tell all New Yorkers who are threatened with eviction that if you need help, call 311 because we want to get you help. We can get you legal support. You know what would be really helpful? If they stopped locking down the city and allowed people to go back to work and allowed businesses to open up and to have employees to hire new employees, that's the only way to solve this. To keep having mandates, to have government decrees that the economic system is just going to be frozen in place until they say so, that's not going to make this better. But the problems here just keep mounting all the time here. He had on on the Daily Mail. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious for the team, other than BuckSexton.com, obviously, what conservative websites you, you like these days and, and where you like to go. I mean, ever since the fall of Drudge, Drudge is now uh, a trash heap. I mean, Drudge is, is just ruining whatever it used to be. Uh, but as, as we look at it, I'm, I'm trying to find sites that are out there that have interesting takes. I mean, I like the Federalist, but that's an opinion site, let's say, a news story site. The Daily Mail, which is a British tabloid, has really good stuff. I I keep saying this. It's remarkable to me. The Daily Mail. The Daily Mail were the ones that got the George Floyd video. 
They were the ones that got the George Floyd video. And, and that, you know, the early, the, the first 10 minutes, not the, the nine minutes that we had already seen. And I understand. Producer Nick told me that the, the British papers will pay big bucks for things like that, which I suppose is why the Brits do sometimes manage to break some of these very big stories where there's just a, a, a video or something, you know, photos that are the story, essentially. But the Daily Mail has this piece because the, the Upper West Side, for those of you who don't know, is... Upper, Upper West Side and Upper East Side are probably the fanciest parts, uh, residential parts of New York City. And a lot of people who work at CNN live on the Upper West Side. A lot of people who work in media live on the Upper West Side. Less so, but still also on the Upper East Side. They're, they're fancy, very, very uh, high net worth areas, you know, high net worth individuals living in these areas. And I've been saying that until... The the urban rot that is occurring, trash on the streets, junkies in open air, using needles on themselves. And this has happened in San Francisco. It's happened in Los Angeles. It's happened in New York. The cities are deteriorating because there's a Democrat mentality that that there's some special right that people have to roll around, you know, shirtless with a heroin needle sticking out of their arm, screaming obscenities at women and small children as they walk past them. And, you know, cops are not allowed to to take them for being either disorderly or, or harassment or anything else and try to get them help. No, just leave them better to leave them out of this. And I see this with my own eyes. I mean, I'm not just this is happening outside my door as I talk to you. But I live in Midtown. See, I live where there are a lot of people that you know. I live in what's really considered Hell's Kitchen, uh, which is not a, a fancy neighborhood, but it was convenient to my offices in Midtown, which is where a lot of people work. And, you know, Hell's Kitchen, it's obviously a name. You go, why do they? No one really knows why they call it that. It just sort of stuck. I've I've looked at the origins of this and there are all these different Internet based theories. But Hell's Kitchen uh, is an area that has always had its fair share of of grime and and an urban decay. But it's when it moves, when it when it goes up, when all of a sudden Antifa is in the Hamptons, which is the fancy part of Long Island, the beach communities in Long Island where all the really rich people go in the summer here. When that happens, when there is that, then maybe they'll feel a little bit differently about it. And I see here the Upper West Side is starting to get a taste of this now. You know, the part this would be like the gated communities in Los Angeles and San Diego, you know, the rich areas dealing with the aggressive law breaking, you know, often deeply mentally and emotionally disturbed homeless population. Right. It's one thing when it's in downtown and people without a lot of money have to just deal with it. But when the rich people have to start dealing with it, you would think that maybe there would be a change in perception. Um, Upper West Side. This is the Daily Mail story. Upper West Side residents furious as homeless junkies and sex offenders are moved into three luxury New York City hotels and turn the area into a spectacle of public urination, catcalling, and brazen drug use. Yep. Junkies, sex offenders, screaming. And so if you live on the Upper West Side now, uh, you know, and your wife is going out to go get groceries, or, you know, not, not to say that that's what wives do, but you know what I mean. If, if, if she's going out uh, by herself, she's got, and there's photos too, she's got junkies, you know, shirtless, aggressive junkies screaming profanity. And, and I, I, I've had this here. I've had lunatics yelling at me in New York for, for months now. And th- that's not entirely new, but it's gotten much worse. It's gotten much worse. You have open air heroin use on Broadway, the most famous street in New York in broad daylight. Broad daylight heroin use on Broadway. That's a change. But the, the, the problem right now with hoping, oh, and they're turning these luxury hotels into uh, homeless shelters. That's what they're, the, the, the city's just saying, no, we're going to use your we're going to designate this a place because you're you're on shutdown right now. You can't really operate your hotel. We're going to use this as a homeless shelter. Imagine what that's like if you live on that block. That's what people are starting to see now. It's so easy for Lib to say, oh, no, we just want to we just want to just help everybody. And that means that people should be able to do heroin in broad daylight. And they're you know, they're just all, all that sort of very. Yeah, it's fine until it's, you know, your five year old that sees a guy. Uh, relieving himself on the street at two o'clock in the afternoon on a major city street, as people I know have, right? It's fine until you're walking home and somebody is 
you know, urinating on your front, on your front door, which has that's happened to me before on your front door as you're waiting to go in it. Then you start to feel a little different about these very left wing policies in cities. Then the Democrat mantra about how we really just need to focus on social justice and not enforcement of law feels a little different. Problem with the Upper West Side situation, though, is that the really rich people, you know, the ones who are like running CNN, the ones who are calling the shots at the New York Times at the very top, they're all out in their summer places right now. So it's those who have to work for a living. It's people that are still trying to pay the mortgage, have to keep their jobs, who are stuck dealing with this now. You know, they're the ones because because in New York, you know, it's block to block. How big is your apartment? It's not like other places where there are rich and poor neighborhoods that are completely separated out quite the same way, although there is some of that, too. Uh, You will have billionaires living a block away from people that are making, you know, minimum wage, basically. I mean, you you can have people that are very in very close contact to each other um, who are in very different socioeconomic status. So. There, there will, I think, be a reckoning with this eventually, but not until it's already uh, done a lot of damage. And you're seeing this all across the country. And I just hope that enough Americans pay attention to this going into Election Day and they, they punish this Democrat mentality where we're just not allowed to be safe and have decent lives and live in clean, nice, safe places. Democrats like, no, we all have to wallow in society's dysfunction and problems together. Except super rich Democrats. They'll find a way on the private jet to go somewhere else. I see CBS 46 down in Georgia has a University of Georgia student's holding a die-in protest at UGA because of the planned fall reopening. You know, you don't want to go, don't go. You don't have to go to University of Georgia. You know, if you're so scared, stay home. But it's just too much fun to be a part of this die-in. RIP campus safety. Oh, my gosh. I swear, uh, 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 the media in this, the media really is the enemy of the people in America. It's true. The, the mainstream media is the enemy of American health, prosperity, sanity, decency, uh, our, our media class. They are the Bolsheviks in this country. I mean, they are seeking to overturn and destroy at, for their own ends, and they will elevate themselves. They will not suffer as they make America suffer. But really, we, we need to declare an ideological war on the mainstream media uh, m- now more than ever. I mean, maybe we've already been waging that here on this show, but now more than ever. All right, let's get to some uh, roll call. Producer Mark, hit that funky roll call. It's time for roll call. Starting it off with the Instagram messages. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do. We post the buck brief there. I'm going to see Tallulah this weekend. I'll take some cute Tallulah photos. All kinds of fun content on the, on the gram. And it's just Buck Sexton. So let's get excited about that. And now let's get to our message requests. Here we go. William. Buck, no offense, but I'm actually hoping you lose your wager with Dr. Gorka. Sebastian Gorka here. He's great. I love Dr. G. My life has become a daily routine of fanciful daydreams, imagining James Comey, John Brennan, and James Clapper, among others, stumbling along in leg irons. This is the greatest political scandal in the history of the U.S., and it's about to be dismissed to the ash pile of history. As down as I, we feel at times, as for my part, I will crawl across broken glass to cast my ballot for Trump, and I'll do it with shields high. Keep the faith, friend. Well, William, I hope there are many, many people all across the country who share your sentiments on this. I certainly do. Um, that would be, it would be great. I, I am, I am hopeful, my friend. I am hopeful. Uh, next one here. Someone wrote me, uh, Buck, can I send you some free Trump masks? Um, I appreciate this sentiment, but I don't, I don't, uh, need any more masks. I got a lot of masks and wearing a Trump mask in New York on the streets here is the equivalent 
of wearing a punch me in the face mask. So, yeah, I don't think we need it. Producer Mark, I don't want you to wear a punch me in the face mask either, so I won't give them to you. Hey, no, I'm okay. Yeah. Wearing a MAGA hat in New York City uh, is, a, is like putting a target on you. You, you, couldn't, you could not walk around in any kind of crowded area with a MAGA hat on and not have people hiss at you and say stuff to you and curse at you. And yet anybody could walk around here with Obama Biden stuff on or Hillary stuff or, you know, old man, Mr. Magoo Biden, Biden stuff, whatever, all of it, all of it. They, they could do any of that. And the expectation would always be that uh, that's fine. That you're not going to no one's going to come after you for that. There's not going to be a problem you have for that. Ryan, Ryan writes on Joe Rogan's podcast from today. They discuss Kamala Harris and how she purposely went ahead with wrongful convictions of innocent people while she was district attorney in San Francisco and California. Um, Yeah, Ryan, I've heard about this before. And if Kamala becomes the candidate, I think this will be one of the main areas of of attack against against her. Uh, There are a few things I can think of that are more uh, odious, more problematic than a prosecutor putting innocent people in prison knowingly, knowingly doing it. Uh, that, that, to me, is a level of moral disgrace and depravity that's, that's truly hard to fathom. Uh, Reagan, great name. Hey, Buck, love the show. About a year ago, you had this author on your show who wrote about ancient history and also had a podcast. I know this may be a long shot, but you recall what his name was. Thanks and Shields High. Um... Producer Mark, do we know she's talking about ancient history and also had a podcast? Was it Victor Davis Hanson? I don't think that's who she's talking. He writes a lot about ancient history. Sounds like before my time. Yeah. I, uh, Reagan, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know who this is, but I appreciate you asking me. And if I figure it out, I'll let you know. Uh, JJ writes, Guten Tag, Herr Sexton. 100% agree with you. Lin-Manuel Miranda cannot sing. Hamilton is all hype. And the songs from Moana are neither memorable nor up to Disney's normal standards for music. Additionally, the Beatles and John Lennon are indeed overrated. Producer Mark, you are nearly always right when it comes to movies, but the buck has you beat on tunes. Thanks for keeping us safe and warm at night. Keep your shields and your treble clefts high. JJ, take that. That might be the worst message we've ever received. Wait a second. Producer Mark, are you telling me that you don't like it when someone writes in to tell me that I'm right all the time and you're right a couple of times? What a shock. Well, no, it's not that. Like, I'm going to look past the Hamilton thing, but Moana is fantastic. It's one of my wife's favorite Disney movies. And to go after John Lennon and who else was the Beatles? Come on. You don't even need me to tell you. She's totally right. She's too, you're, you're totally She's right, so J.J. Wrong. Don't listen to this. Producer Mark, don't listen, you know, Mark the Grouch over here. Don't listen to him. Uh, you know what? I'm sure a lot of our listeners are angry at that. Yeah, well, they can write, they can write it or they sure. can call in at 844-900-2825. 844-900-BUCK. That is producer Mark's nah, favorite homework assignment. I'm not listening to the voicemails anymore. No more of that. He, he, he wants to spend all night, all the time listening to the voicemails. He loves it. Um, Done. Okay. We got more here. in the, Actually, no. Let's, let's go into the Facebook uh, box and also the... Uh, Email box, Team Buck at iHeartMedia.com, Facebook.com slash Buck Sexton. Yes, indeed. Roll call. Here it is. Matt kicks it off for this section. Buck, if it is too dangerous for schools to open, why haven't daycare shut down? I have two kids in daycare, and here in Wisconsin, they haven't been shut down once throughout all this. I think this has been the perfect small-scale experiment that proves it is safe for our kids and teachers to be in one building at the same time. I don't hear anyone talking about this either. Just a thought. Keep up the good work. Shields high. Matt, uh, yeah, I I think that that shows you that it's safe for kids. It's just not safe for kids who have to be taught by teachers because the teachers unions don't want to have to do their job, but they want to still get paid, which doesn't surprise anybody who knows a whole lot about teachers unions. I will say I keep watching this mafia show and I always think, now, hey, the unions. But, they, you know, the guy's name, like, Fat Tony and, uh, uh, what was his name? Um, 
Uh, ah, I'm trying to fat Tony's a very, there's a whole bunch of like the five family Godfather guys who have those nicknames and this, this mafia names are hilarious because they're exactly what you think. They're, they're exactly what you think they'll be. And what was I talking about the mafia for? Oh yeah. The, the control they had over unions was amazing. And then, you know, that was a big part of it. I'm really enjoying this show on Netflix. I'm just telling you. Bosch is also phenomenal. I give Bosch an A minus just because I'm very, very uh, strict with what shows I will give an A to, but it's an A minus show for me. Yeah, very that's good. That's the first show you've ever said you liked. Really? Weird. Yeah. Uh, probably not, but it's very you should check. You should check out for sure the Mafia Netflix thing. I think you'll enjoy that. You and Mrs. Yeah. Mark, that's like fun viewing because they do a very good job on it. And, and Bosch is is fantastic i i also highly i will give them both a shot yeah sure. amazon amazon prime so if you got amazon prime that's what you need to watch bosch but uh it goes gets it done all right next up here um oh no sorry but matt to finish up on this yeah i think that it's clear that the the libs don't want schools to open because they want to beat trump not because they think it's really scary for kids to be in school some people do. Look, there are people who are terrified of this whole thing still. They, they, they don't handle the possibility of the, uncer- you know, the uncertainty of an illness like this. They, they're... What's interesting is the people that are the most aggressive about this that I come across, that I see online or that you know, I, I just hear about anecdotally, are not people who are at the highest risk from the disease. Because you know, if you're 65, 70 years old and you want to have really strict precautions for yourself and, and you want extra help to make sure you're safe. I have, I totally understand that the people that are freaking out though. And that don't want anybody to school are like 30. They're like, Oh my gosh, they're like the UGA protest. These are college kids. They're going to be fine. They're all doing a die in. Cause UGA opened lunatics. Jim writes, you'll be proud to know as of today, I'll be a pure talk USA user. What sold me wasn't the price so much as their hotspot matching service to a total amount of GBS remaining. My old service limited me to 10 gigs, no matter how much data I had left. Besides, I'll do anything to help or serve our armed uh, help or serve our armed services, police or first responders. I'm a fire police officer myself. Shields high. Jim, God bless you, man. I think you're really going to love Pure Talk. I got Pure Talk and uh, it's it's great customer service. Great deal. You'll really enjoy it. So thank you so much, man. And also, when, when you do that, as I always say, whenever someone goes to one of our sponsor uh, URLs, and if they can use that product, I mean, all the products that we, that we talk about here on the show, we have long-standing relationship. Well, we have a strong relationship. I should say some of them. We have a long-standing relationship with the brand. And they're great products. Uh, so please do check them out. And that's a way of keeping, you know, otherwise, producer Mark is going to have to open the world's grouchiest music rental store or something where people ask him, what should I rent? And he's like, shut up. Right. We don't want that. What is a music rental store? Uh, I was thinking of a video rental store, like the old days. Yeah. You know, did I say music rental though? You did. I which me- both don't apply in 2020. I kind of messed that one up. Yeah. But it would yeah. be like a throwback for you though. You know, but, but I, if I opened the business, wouldn't I want to make some money? That's probably true. I don't know. Let me, I, I'm curious if, if you just, if you just tomorrow, your mandate in life was you were going to start a small business just based on what you like or what, what would it be? I mean, I guess before COVID, I always said uh, opening a bar like a sports bar would be cool. Sports bar. Yeah. But now, uh, you know, that might not be the best avenue. I, I mean, I would I would try to go. I'd try to go small farm to table restaurant. But I know that's a super hard thing to pull off. Well, and yes. stay in business and all that. But that's probably what I would. That's probably what I would do because I'm not a big drinker. So I don't know how, how good I am for the bar. And also, I can't well, drink. it wouldn't be. You know, a sports bar has food, too. And That's I'd true. have awesome appetizers. What, what would be, if, you, if your sports bar was going to be known for one item on your sports bar menu, what would it have to be? One item that, that brings them in. I can't say for sure the one item because I'm not a chef, but something mac and cheese related. Mac and cheese. Okay, so like a lobster mac and cheese or sure. something like that. Or like, like a cool mac and cheese. A cheeses. smoked gruyere mac and cheese, perhaps. Yeah. That. Maybe in some mac and cheese balls. Because I'll say for me, when I and I've 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 had many, many chicken wings um, the, for me, the the chicken wing, if it's really, really good is is a reason to go somewhere. But I, I will judge a place. I will judge a place based on its French fries because oh, French fries point. are are pretty easy to do well. And there's no excuse for subpar French fries. 
I'm looking at you, In-N-Out Burger. No excuse for your wow. subpar French fries. I've never had In-N-Out, but what is your favorite French fry like type? Uh, I mean, I, I so I'm not as cr- a, a crinkle fry guy. Like Shake Shack does the crinkle fries, and Shake Shack fries are very tasty, though. So I give them, you know, I give them credit for at least having good tasting fries. Uh, producer Nick says he he loves General So's chicken wings. Oh, producer Nick, that Chinese amazing. food is my weakness, man. If I want to gain weight, I just order Chinese food because I will I will put away a pound a pound and a half. Two pounds of that stuff like it's nothing. It's just I don't even want to know how many calories of Chinese food I can ingest. So I'm with you on the General So's chicken. That is my my weak my weakness. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, wait, were we talking about chicken wings a second ago? Or this? We're talking about French fries. Oh, French fries. Tight. Oh, uh, I can't have McDonald's fries because they use there's wheat in uh, the wow. stock that they have for them or something. There's actually some wheat in the french fries which is really annoying but yeah i surprisingly say wendy's fries are almost as good as mcdonald's i'm still i'm just i get angry with the in and out burger thing because in and out burgers are so good but their french fries are like little pieces of yellow cardboard they're just bad every time i've gone out to california i've never been able to find in and out it's not it hasn't been convenient enough by the go. airport which airport lax i haven't gone to la ah see because uh. that's the thing about that is it's really convenient until you're like a little bit close to maybe missing your flight and you really want that double double animal style burger and the, you're cutting it even closer and then that gets stressful and then you'll you know I just I've been there I've been Do they there. have gluten free buns? No, they put it on lettuce lettuce wrap. Oh, lettuce wrap. Okay. Yeah, lettuce wrap. You know, french fries also should be gluten free. Some places get a little silly and they flour their french fries to crisp them up a little bit so they'll put a, a batter on the french fries essentially or at least like a mm. a, a coating of flour on them. And those places should be banished forever. So it makes me very sad when they do that. Um, all right. Sage. Oh, but I'll just say this, guys. You can t- if, if the French fries at a restaurant, if, if the French fries are hand cut and good, all of the food will be good. It's one of these things that, that is a marker for everything else. If you go to a place and the fries are really good, then if the fries taste like they were brought in by some big truck that just finished dropping off the fries at a prison somewhere, the food will not be very good because that, that's just that's just laziness on the part of the uh, of the food prep staff because it's not hard to make French. If you got a fryer, it's not hard to make French fries. And these all sports bars and stuff have fryers. So I get very. The other thing is, Bruce Mark, the bathroom in a restaurant tells you all you need to know. Oh, yeah. If it's dirty, if the food, the kitchen's probably just yep. as dirty. The, ki- the, the bathroom in a restaurant. I used to not really. I didn't want to believe this because there are some places I liked. Maybe even some sushi joints, where you know, in the, in the East Village, where the bathroom is kind of eh, 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 the bathroom tells you everything. You walk into the bathroom of a restaurant, you know whether the staff is on their game. You know if the kitchen is clean, and so on and so forth. You know, because even in a night in a nice sports bar, you know the bathroom will be will be orderly and clean. Yes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. All right. Uh, Sage. Next up, listen to today's show. I just want to tell you that Hawaii has had a mandatory two-week quarantine for every visitor. Tourism has completely died here, and it is 95% of our economy. Went into effect in March, got extended once to September 1st. Looks like it's going to get extended again. Sage, I'm so sorry to hear that. Sage is one of my favorite spices. I think I, I don't know if I've ever said that before. I put sage. I will dice up sage and put it in eggs. Delicious. A little bit of uh, goat cheese. Magnifique. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear about the tourism situation in Hawaii. I love Hawaii. Terrible politics, beautiful place, great people. That's true of a lot of places in America, but Hawaii is a great state. So uh, thank you so much, Sage, for uh, letting us know what's going on out there. Just keep the faith. At least you got beautiful weather and beautiful stuff around you. And uh, we'll, we will. We, I, I, I hate all this. Stuff. We'll get through this together, but we really will, Sage. You're going to be able to write to me. Give it six months and things are going to start to feel like they're coming back. See, I said six months, not three, because I think it's going to take six. <laughs> All right, next up here, Joseph. Hey, Buck and producer Mark. I really enjoy uh, the light you're shining on the madness we're going through during these crazy and sometimes dark times. Has anyone ever done anything in the weekend at Bernie's idea where Bernie Sanders is carting around the Biden carcass, perhaps with shades and a mask, and speaking for him? I would love to hear something done with that. Listen to both your shows. Not saying I listen completely listen every minute, but days when I run out of current show, I download the night show too. 
Shields high, lock down the riots, free the economy. Joseph, thank you, man. Yeah, you can always listen to the WOR show as well if you want, so there's that opportunity, but you should always listen to this one first because uh, I don't want producer Mark to uh, slap me the next time he sees me. So this is, the, this is the show you listen to first. If you feel like listening to the other show, which is a local show, you're by all means welcome to do so. And, uh, if you can find it. Which, yeah, I mean, there's that too. Um, but as for the weekend at Bernie's idea, I think people have talked about uh, the weekend. At, they've, they've spoken about this as the weekend at Bernie's campaign, in a sense, where they're just going to cart Biden around and pretend that he's something that he's not. So we've certainly heard a bit of that. Gina Hagen Buck, listen to you talk about the West Wing and American president. Wow, we were transfixed every week. It was great TV, but as you said, sanctimonious liberal drivel. I saw American president a couple years ago again, had to turn it off when the president stood at the podium saying, if we have to go door to door, we're going to get the guns. Sorkin, ugh, shields high. Yeah, Sorkin is the classic smug, thinks he's much smarter than he is lib. So he had a great audience for a while because... There are a lot of libs like that, you know. We're just going to take all the guns and then everything will be better. It's, it's like these people don't even really live in America. Like they don't know anything about the country that they're writing about. But that's what we got. Um, next up here, Kelly. Hey, Buck, love your show. We couldn't do it without people like you. I'm so frustrated today. My husband and I found out our kids will be doing the 50% school hybrid model. Can I tell you how angry and frustrated we feel? We are being forced to do something that makes no sense. I think I'm on the brink of craziness. These educators are going to tell us to do uh, these educators are going to tell us what to do when we pay huge taxes in our town of Massachusetts. This model means our kids will only go to school two days and remote three days uh, where I will have to take the time out and help my little one again. This all sucks. I just want to know what other parents are doing about this. Enough is enough. I would love to hear more about this in your show. Keep up the good work. Thank you for all you do, Kelly. Well, you know, Kelly, it's interesting because Chuck Schumer came out uh, came out earlier today and said, if we don't open up the schools, you're going to hurt the economy significantly. Democrats, I think they did some polling on this one. They're finding out "Mm, this whole school shutdown thing. People don't like it. The media can be as hysterical as they want, but people with kids want their kids in school. They don't like this. So we may see fingers crossed. We may see a turning of the tide on this. I think it's absolutely possible. Jessica. Hey, Buck, I heard you talking during roll call about Election Day being a national holiday. I get the point, but I disagree. We already have a ton of holidays that benefit only government workers, teachers, and financial sector, a.k.a. Democrats. The rest of us have to work no matter what the day. Doctors, nurses, EMTs, restaurants, retail, basically every other human. A holiday doesn't mean we get the day off. I say that an in-person election time should run over the course of three days. This would give more people the opportunity to get there around their work schedule. We already pay the government workers enough money to take days off. Let's not add more. P.S. I'm self-employed and work seven days a week. Haven't had a day off since February 2015. I have no sympathy for people that can't get stuff done because of work. Just saying. Shields high. Oh, Jessica's fierce. I like it. Uh... Yeah, you're right about people not being able to take the day off, even if it's a federal holiday. So, correct. Uh, I got I got to give you that one. As for making it over three days, I like that idea. But then the libs will say five days, and then they'll say fifty days. So just be prepared for that. Jason Buck, it drives me crazy. She drives me crazy watching these politicians and Democrat media hacks act like they were the great leaders during this pandemic. I was at Disney and Universal the day the private sector stepped up and started shutting things down. Uh, It wasn't the government that made them shut down. It was voluntary action on behalf of private companies to protect their employees and customers. The NBA and the NHL kicked it off. Then restaurant owners, stores and malls followed. Only after all this did government step up and lock us down the rest of the way. Now that we have a better understanding of this virus, the very business that we were leading are being told, no, you can't reopen until your overlords give you permission. What a shocker. Politicians lead from behind and don't want to give up their powers. Yeah, man, I hear you on that. Good, good perspective, Jason. Linda, aloha, Buck. You thought New York was bad. We live in Hawaii, total of 29 deaths. And our ultra leftist weak governor has the state in lockdown for a long time now. All incoming travelers are required to quarantine for 14 days alone in their hotel room or be subject to arrest. What? We have a friend who's here with her daughter who'll be starting her freshman year at U of H, and they're in nine days of mandatory quarantine, losing their minds, not to mention spending a lot for two weeks in a hotel room. 
That's crazy. Hawaii, heart goes out to you. Uh, that's going to be it for the week, uh, friends. Thank you for being here. Talk to you on Monday. Shields high.